ओके ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर कविता हिंगाने ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ साउ लीना किशोर मामिडवार Institute of Management Studies and Research, Chandrapur. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Today we are gathered here for one day national webinar on intellectual property rights, patents, and design process, organized by Saulina Kishor Mamidwar, Institute of Management Studies and Research, Chandrapur, in association with Rajiv Gandhi, National Institute of Intelligence, uh, Intellectual Property Management, Nagpur. under the national intellectual property awareness mission i hope we get a very good knowledge from this webinar first of all i like to invite dr jayan chakravarti sir principal of the institute for welcome address a very good morning to all the fraternity and dear students ऑनरेबल पूजा मौलिकर मैडम इज हियर विथ अस वी हैड अ लॉन्ग एसोसिएशन विथ राजीव गांधी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट एवरी इयर वी आर कंडक्टिंग वेरियस नेशनल वेबिनार ऑन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म बट आई वुड लाइक टू टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू रिक्वेस्ट मैडम पूजा मौलिकर to so please visit our institute once and we'll be really pleased please to have your presence in our institute and your guidance will be really fruitful to all the students even the faculties i take this privilege to announce that uh, recently our institute uh, has been accredited with national board of accreditation which is one of the highest accreditation in uh, uh, india Uh, for getting any recognition to any engineering or management institute so we are the only one institute in this entire chandrapur and garchirali district under gondwana university and would like to share with you ma'am that we are only uh, the third in vidarbha very few colleges of nagpur only i can count them two colleges in nagpur which is being accredited by nba and third is ours so on friday the result was declared and uh, our institute is being accredited with nba earlier the student uh, sorry earlier the institute has already been accredited with nag as b++ just short of one mark to achieve a grade we have not filed uh, for revision uh, so that we feel that it will be a great opportunity to again uh, appear in cycle 2 for nag uh, accreditation Uh, why i'm telling all these things to today because this is a platform where uh, i would uh, rather suggest to all the faculties that uh, dr uh, madam pooja molikar will be sharing with us the basic uh, of patents and design process because it is now mandatory for every faculties to undergo pa patents uh, i would like to share ma'am ki we are having all various faculties with national and international Uh, conferences they have paper, uh, presented the paper even they have some of the faculties has a copyright also but uh, very few faculties has a patent so this is much a concern area now in the next cycles of uh, nac accreditation or nb accreditation we want 100% of the faculties to have their patent uh, get them uh, registered their patent and being awarded a patent on that relative management subjects so this is a good platform i hope not only the faculties but even all the management students will take benefit of uh, the expert today who will be sharing with us regarding the various design process of uh, patent and copyright so not i will not come between you and the speaker so thanks for giving me an opportunity to share my views thanks a lot thank you for patience hearing thank you sir for uh, welcome address now it's time to introduce our eminent resource person for today's webinar honorable mrs pooja molikar madam she is the chief examiner of the patent and designs drawing and dispersing officer 
Central Public Information Officer of Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Intellectual Property Management, Nagpur. So I now invite Mrs. Pooja Molikar, Madam, to proceed for the session on intellectual property rights, patent and design process. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for the warm uh, welcome and the opening remarks by Dr. Jayesh, sir, who has thrown some light on the topic and the achievements done and the dedication towards intellectual property rights and the developmental process uh, through the Institute. It is really nice to know about the achievements of the organization. And it also becomes important for us to focus more on intellectual properties as well. We all know that there are different types of IPs their protections are important for national uh, growth of our country. But then sometimes we do not pay attention to its details. And that is why it becomes sometimes an issue. It is not like we are not uh, having that potential to create IPs, but we aren't being main, made aware about the basics of intellectual properties and how to go about its protection. First of all, we do not, uh, I've heard people uh, getting misunderstood with different types of IPs as well. If they have done an invention, they are seeking its protection in copyrights. If they have written a book, they are sometimes asking its protection in, uh, let's say, patents. So this is the wrong way of understanding the concept. And if it is understood wrongly, of course, you'll file it in a wrongful manner and you wouldn't be getting a grant from that requisite IP office. And eventually, we conclude that it is difficult to get a IP protection. So to stop this trend and to let people know about different aspects of IPs and get, getting themselves clarified about these aspects so that they can go for a rightful filing and protection. This workshop is being conducted. Um, I wouldn't take much time. I would like to share my screen first of all so that the presentation becomes visible. <coughs> So a very warm welcome to all present here. First of all, I would like to congratulate the entire team of the college, which has taken initiative towards conducting this workshop. Not only this, uh, it is also important to congratulate uh, uh, people present here as participants because they understanding the importance of the topic and sparing time to understand uh, this particular uh, topic is also appreciated. So I welcome you all. As already introduced, my name is Pooja Maulikar. I'm working as the examiner of patents and designs at Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Intellectual Property Management. This is a training center regarding uh, giving training regarding IPs, that is intellectual properties. And in case you are interested in any of the trainings being conducted by us, you may very well write to us at rgniipm.ipo at the rate nic.in. Along with this, it is important to share our official website. We are available at ipindia.gov.in, wherein you will find information about RGN IPM as well as other IPs. <coughs> so the topic of the day is intellectual property rights. We'll throw some light on the basics of IPs, but we'll focus more on patents and design processes because they've been considered as, they, they require more attention for its understanding. Um, this topic is taken in very much introductory in nature. Now the presentation is designed in such a manner that we can include the basics. Uh, we totally understand that in any workshop, you'll find mixed group of, group of people who are either uh, expert in that field or they're having sufficient knowledge or they are entirely blank about the topic. So to take everybody along with us, we have made the presentation in very much basic and introductory manner. But again, we have to realize the fact that all the IPs are having different acts and rules on which they are functioning. So it becomes very important for us to refer to those acts, rules, or if any government order is imposed on it, to referring to all of them so that you become really sure about uh, filing at that particular moment. Act do not get changed, but you will get reminded of the important factors of the act and the rules might get changed uh, over a period of time. In case you aren't aware about it, you that, that, that might create an issue later. 
uh, or might become a hindrance in your filing and rest of the procedure. So it is always advisable that you uh, refer to the act and rules uh, before taking any IP action. We are also available socially at Facebook and Twitter because it is understood that the reach of social medias is really far enough. And in case you want to be available uh, uh, to let people know about your activities, it's very important to be socially present. So we have made ourselves available at Facebook and Twitter in case you want to know about our future endeavors, our activities, our functioning and let others also know about it, you may follow us through these social media handles. Now, uh, before we begin, it is important to share the official locations of different IP offices because this is the point where people get mostly confused as to they think that uh, there might be any local uh, IP office in their state, in their region, etc. So at the very first, uh, I would like to clarify about the official structure. We are basically coming under Ministry of Commerce and Industry, where there is a Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. Now, this particular department holds the Office of Controller General of Patents, Designs, Trademarks, and GIs. <coughs> this is the major office looking after the proper functioning of different IP offices. Now, um, uh, it is like uh, the different IP offices are functioning under it. To be specific about patents and designs, these are located at four locations in our country. That is at uh, Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, and Kolkata. Now, this has been carefully placed at these locations. If you divide our country into east, west, north, south zones, uh, geographically, if you divide them, then of course, you'll find that there is one particular office in one particular zone. Now, this is... Uh, also important for people residing in that zone to file their patent and design application only in the office available in their zone. Now, the, uh, this will give equal access to people residing in various zones and moreover, one particular office will not be burdened with uh, most of the applications received throughout the country. So this was the idea behind having four different uh, offices at different locations. <coughs> Next is PIS. This uh, stands for Patent Information System. This office is established at Nagpur. This was established during the time when information was not easily available. So those days, in case you wanted to find information related to your invention, it was very difficult to find it out. So Patent Information System provides paid information to such people. Because, see, you were supposed to find out all the information related to your invention so that you can conclude about its patentability factor. So, uh, those days, only sources of information were books, libraries, repositories, articles, journals. Uh, these were available in repositories and uh, libraries, etc. You were supposed to visit them, uh, find out information, jot it down according to your convenience and your requirement and then conclude whether it seems to be patentable or not based on the prior public knowledge. So this was a very tedious task and to provide, um, if here you are not able to uh, conclude properly, it might create more difficulties in filing and rest of the factors. So uh, patent information was providing paid service to such people. Today we are seeing that this internet connectivity has made our task, our lives very much easy. Over a click of mouse, you can find information to various in various domains. Even if it is a critical stuff, or even if it is a very simple and lame concept, you can understand it over a click of mouse itself. Finding so today we do not find difficulty in finding information. Moreover, uh, we are also having access to information. Uh, it is easily accessible to most of us. I wouldn't say it has reached every nook and corner of our country. But it is uh, at least the reach has been expanded to the previous, uh, you know, um, availability. So today, though we have uh, we are having access to information, it is available easily. But still, it is seen that we do not understand the various aspects of IPs. The concept of intellectual property is not clear, not only among students, but it is not clear among elders as well. So to clarify this, to let people know about 
uh, the aspects of ips to create awareness to let ed- people get ed- educated regarding different aspects of ips rgn ipm was established this is also located centrally at nagpur now this stands for rajiv gandhi national institute of intellectual property management uh, moving further we are having trademark this is another type of ip whose offices are located at five locations delhi mumbai chennai kolkata and lastly we are available at ahmedabad as well um uh, last type of ip being dealt by us is uh, geographical indications so geographical indications office is located at chennai alone we do not have any branches for geographical indications in any of the other part of our country <coughs> and these are the pictorial views of our various ipo buildings located at Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, and Kolkata. This is the building of RG and IPM, which is a international level IPR training center. This is uh, uh, this is located at Nagpur. Now, um, this is an international level IPR center. We are having a a lot of trainings. This is exhaustively involved into trainings. So, uh, as by looking at the building itself you can conclude that there are this building is designed to have physical training so all the electronic requirements setting arrangement food rest of the factors for conducting a smooth uh, training is available here we provide uh, right from uh, reading to writing material internet connectivity systems etc everything is available so that we can conduct the training very easily at a time we can conduct about a training for uh, 300 people we have conducted it in past as well so we are really sure about its smooth conduction um slowly and gradually we have seen since through this pandemic that we required a virtual platform as well because there was a huge public demand for conducting uh, virtual trainings so we have shifted our attention there as well and we are doing really good in this as well there is a huge response at every training being conducted by rgn ipm so either physically or uh, electronically we are conducting various trainings so right from 1 hour to to up to 2 weeks we are conducting various trainings at rgn ipm all the trainings are certificate based training courses now uh, you may visit rgn ipm's website ip india's website to know about the schedules upcoming schedules about the trainings now um, we are also having associations and collaborations with international bodies to keep our internal officers updated about international aspects of ips and as well as for conducting trainings for public as well so regarding the public training we are having association with wipo this stands for world intellectual property organization this is situated at geneva switzerland they conduct summer schools with some of the countries and india is fortunate to be one of them so we conduct wipo india summer school on an annual basis <coughs> are you saying there is me in january ka hai in please do you know january ke hai ha वर्कशॉप so in case you want to do any of the trainings been conducted by rg and ipm you can write to us officially at rg and iipm dot ip at the rate nic dot in now this is the official website ip india dot gov dot in here you will find information regarding patent design trademarks gis rg and ipm etc all the ips are quasi judicial in nature they are having partial judicial factor in them all because they been governed by different uh, you know acts and rules now these acts and rules are passed through the parliament and based on this only the ips are functioning so in case you want to refer to that exact representation of act and rules they are available at ip india um amendments in case are been done with respect to any of the rules of any of the ips are again made available at ip india's website 
For easy understanding of the concept, manuals and guidelines have also been provided by IP India at this website. Uh, we are having search platforms for different IPs. We also hold information related to all the forms required for filing. In case you want to go for a hard copy filing, what would be the fees? In case you want to go for offline, uh, online filing based on your category, what exactly would be the fees? Everything is available in an Excel format at IP India's website. We have also started an online filing facility whose link is available at the website. All the IPs uh, now, um, uh, apart from this, we have seen that there are repetitive questions being asked and they were common enough among the general public. So we have listed all such questions and we've answered them, made them available at IP India's website. So the commonly asked doubts can be clarified merely by looking at the answers provided by IP India. <laughs> Further, now, the topic of the day, intellectual property. For this, we have to understand the meaning of individual terms, intellectual and property. So traditionally, we understand the meaning of property as something which is tangible in nature, which can be measured, which can be touched. You can compare it with money or any form of currency, etc. is considered as property. Now, based on their location specific as specificness you may again classify them into immovable or movable assets so in case you hold a piece of land farm house building etc that will be treated as immovable property on the other hand it is treated as movable in case you can move it from one location to other like if, in case you are having a car gold investment whose location can be moved from one location to other but slowly and gradually, we have also understood that there are certain things which are intangible in nature. You cannot touch them. You cannot feel them. But when they are worked on and when you have completed the task, slowly and gradually over a period of time down the lane, that, that will help you in earning. So these are ideas and expressions coming out of a human brain. Brain is having the ability to think, provide solution to existing problems. And this, uh, because of this capability, which comes, of course, on the basis of knowledge known to the brain, conditioning done on the brain, and the type of experiences it has come across. So based on this, it is able to propose certain ideas. These ideas are, of course, raw in nature. You need to work on it, provide it in a proper format. Um, for this, you, of course, require certain amount of knowledge, experience, um, uh, then you have to provide certain other resources like labor, money, time, etc. to bring it into the final form, which when commercialized, which when brought into the public domain for commercialization, put into practice will help you in earning. So that is the reason why it is called as intellectual as well as property. So intellectual property came because of this concept. And there are different types of intellectual properties based on the characteristics of uh, that particular IP. This can be listed under patents, designs, trademarks, VIs, copyrights, etc. All the IPs are having certain rights, uh, which will be given to the person who have uh, got its protection. So first of all, you will be able to enjoy exclusive rights to make it, sell it, exercise it, give license to whomever you wish to. And at the same time, you will be able to control people who, who are trying to commercialize it. So the entire rights to decide the fate of the IP remains with the person who have filed for that IP. So that is the reason this is called as exclusive right or monopoly right, or you may also call it as negative right because you stop others from making and commercializing it. It is very important to understand that these are territorial rights, the country where you file for it, where you get its protection. <laughs> <laughs> they are valid only in the country where you get its protection. So uh, this is the reason why they are called as territorial rights. Now, um, uh, there is a misunderstanding among the general public that once filed, it is valid throughout the world. Nobody in this world will be, may, will be allowed to commercialize it without my permission. So this isn't the concept. It, it is only valid in the country where you have got its protection. Uh, again, this is licensable right. There are various benefits of giving or getting a license. 
which uh, can be utilized for uh, expanding that business. There are various significances of IPs as well, which makes it really lucrative and attractive to understand. Now, uh, first of all, it will help us to avoid duplication of research, all because once the research is being done with respect to a particular concept and it is being protected in a particular country under patents, after that, throughout the world, nobody will be able to file the same concept again, same exact representation of that particular research again in any part of the world. So people will be really vigilant enough to find out information which is already available, which is already being protected, and they'll try to uh, not do research in that particular domain because already this has been created. We all know there is no point in recreation. When we know wheel is only uh, already created, what is the point in creating it again? So neither you're going to get any monopoly, no recognition, nothing at all. So it is very important to find out prior information, avoid them, and uh, try to create something very much unique and new, which will fetch you certain recognition and other benefits as well. So it avoids duplication of research as such. But any concept once proposed, after that only improvements are allowed with respect to that particular concept or entirely a new stuff can be created. So whenever a technology's benchmark is being set, after that improvements are again welcomed for um, protection. This is the way how we have reached the smartphone from the version of phone being pro proposed by Alexander Graham Bell. So it encourages people in general, people in R&D Institute and uh, uh, in academia, etc., to come up with uh, improvement in the proposed technology or the benchmark which is being set. It also gives, <coughs> uh, eventually you will be able to see that the general public is able to enjoy better and cheaper products, all because the existing technology has been improved and is launched into the market. Now, every patent, when it has been filed, the problem how they have addressed is listed in patent specification and it gets published over a period of time. So anybody can utilize this patent uh, specification, which has been published, to understand how the problem was been addressed, what betterment could be done, and the rest of the inspirations which they can get through that patent specification. So it adds to the ocean of scientific and technical knowledge, and this can be utilized by anybody to enhance their expertise. Now, any invention, once they are being filed, it is valid for a certain period of time after which it expires and there might be a cessation of patent also because of certain reasons so in either of the case the invention which is being protected under patents will be transferred as a public property which simply means anybody can utilize it without the permission of the applicant rewards in the form of exclusive rights to make it, sell it, exercise it, distribute it. You can even share, license, or sell that entire IP as well, as per your wish or will. So this is the reward which you get when you protect it in a rightful manner. And monetary benefits in the form of profits, royalties, are of course a part of it which comes handy when you put that IP into practice. You may also expect royalties when the technology is being transferred or you've gone for licensing of that concept. <laughs> Let's have a look at different types of IPs. We'll begin with patents. Patents is all about the exclusive privilege or right which you get. And this is granted by Government of India to the person who files for it. This starts from the day you have gone for filing of that application. So from the date of filing, 20 years is the time period of protection of that patents. And this is given for commercial gain. This is in consideration of full disclosure of the invention. You cannot hide any factor, any important aspect of that invention because it will create hurdle in your application to be evaluated in a smooth manner. So it is always advised that you disclose the invention in a full and particular manner to the patent office for having a smooth association and experience with the patent office. Now, this is territorial in nature. I have already uh, highlighted the fact that there is nothing called worldwide right, international right, or global right. So this is to be remembered. There are certain categories which need to be criteria, I would say, which need to be satisfied for that invention to be called as patentable. 
so any invention can be either novel in nature or inventive in nature to call it as patentable now firstly novelty is something which is new now the invention if it is new which means that in the prior public information it is the information related to the invention is not disclosed then we call such concepts as novel in nature so uh, any prior public information is technically called as prior art which includes anything which is either published presented or otherwise disclosed to the general public in any manner before the date of filing of your application complete specification all the inventions are not new some of them are inventive in nature now inventiveness is nothing but over the benchmark the existing knowledge which is present in the public domain over that if you are able to provide any technical advancement or at least economic significance is brought with respect to that concept or both the things at the same time like you have brought technical advancement and economic significance at the same time your invention will be still considered as inventive in nature and that will be again patentable <laughs> we also get confused normally between discovery and invention discovery is all about things properties characteristics of any material or article which is existing in nature humans have not contributed in its existence they did not come to know about it the day they come to know about such things is called as discovery of that particular uh, material or article with respect to that property characteristics etc so this is simply called as discovery we didn't we do not have any technical effect involved in it we haven't contributed in its existence so that is why this is called as discovery and discoveries are not patentable on the other hand inventions is all about products or processes which are either new or at least they are inventive in nature whose definition is just uh, said so either newness or inventiveness is there with respect to any product or process and at the same time if you are able to commercialize it it is capable of industrial applicability then we call such concept as invention and inventions are patentable so whenever you carry out any research or project you basically try to identify some problem you try to solve that problem and you can apply a patent for the same if your solution to the problem is fitting into the definition of inventions so by the time we talk about all this people get really confused and uh, stress that this is all about critical stuff this is all about difficult stuff which can be patented but it isn't so there are n number of examples of simple stuff which has changed um the type of life we are witnessing we are actually utilizing different types of ips in the, throughout our day and uh, to make you comfortable with the term patents i would like to quote few examples from our day to day life which you are utilizing so that you also understand that simple issues simple concepts can also be patented <coughs> paper clip is one such example this was invented in the year 1900 by johan waller at norway now the why paper clip was invented was all because uh, in case you wanted to keep a bunch of papers together the only method available back then was to pierce the entire bunch of papers and tie it with a thread now this is very difficult and every time you cannot utilize the same method because it might ruin the papers together and it might uh, while doing so or while keeping it in such manner the papers might get damaged so to have an alternative better method paper clip was invented wherein a simple wire is twisted and turned thrice in such a manner that it can hold papers together next is the zipper zipper is nothing but a uh, 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 you know before zipper was invented buttons buckles belts and straps were the only fastening means bandh kar dete hain but zipper has actually brought revolution in clothing and baggage industry and we still do not have any better alternative to this then is ball point pen there are various versions of pen which were been proposed and which mankind has used like uh, our ancestors were dipping quill in ink and they were writing slowly and gradually they did come up come up with ink pen fountain pen ball point pen gel pen etc but still when you go to the market <coughs> the obvious choice of a pen to be purchased is a ball point pen 
all because of its characteristics like it is having a spill proof mechanism the content written with it remains for a longer duration it does not get fade away so easily even when it con comes in contact with water it does not get wiped away so easily so there are various benefits of using a ballpoint pen this is also one of the inventions which we are using when ips are combined together it can also help you to come up with a miraculous product so this is also one of the examples of such sort of uh, product now uh, imagining the cost of 1 lakh rupees for a four wheeler vehicle is a different dream and it is not possible as such but it is what we made possible with the help of various combinations of ips of course uh, we all know this is the cheapest car known in the world um this was produced by tata company when they have launched their nano car of course the company has reduced most of the luxuries from the car to bring down the cost there was no ac radio passenger side mirror the wipers were being customized the wheels were being customized the um, cylindrical engine was being customized so <coughs> for better fuel efficiency etc so they have tried to do all the possible combinations and ips which when utilized properly can help you come up with a great output now it is always advised by the intellectual property office that you do not bring your uh, invention in the public domain in any of the format before you go for patent filing so in the form of publication or usage even in secrecy this is not allowed and most importantly you have to be sure about the completion of your invention before applying for the uh, patent application because sometimes it happens that you sometimes file half done work and later on when when the time comes to complete it uh, it is not allowed so over, beyond a certain limit this is not allowed and that is why it is always advisable that you be really sure about the completion of your invention the invention is fully developed then go for patent filing next type of ip is design as we can see from the word that it is all about the external look and appearance of a particular product so here the features of shape configuration pattern ornamentation colors combinations um combination of lines etc everything which can which can be uh, proposed to the external look of a product is considered here in any of the combination which the applicant wants to apply to that product this can be applied in 2d or 3d or in both the forms <coughs> now the purpose of design is to attract customers all because the product look appealable to eye it beautifies the product and eventually people want to possess that particular design and they purchase that particular product so the design registration can be enjoyed for a period of 10 years and it can be extended for 5 more years so maximum you can protect it for 15 years it is important to note that any design is to be applied to any article which can be manufactured which can be made or sold separately it shouldn't be applied to any article which is broken or damaged which cannot be recreated for the second time for commercialization now any design uh, what is the importance of design is all about um, let's understand a condition where two or more companies are selling the same product their functionalities is same the technology is same more or less the price is also same because of the market factors when the then the only differential factor they can bring to that product to make their product look unique is the design so design will add value to your product it will give you fair return over the investment you are doing in that product it will help people to build a business asset and create a fair and healthy competition in the market we have witnessed that there are very really small business owners and startups which are doing really great only on the basis of industrial designs and next is trademark which is normally called as brand name trademark is nothing but a visual symbol which you give to your product in the form of word name symbol brand numerical combination of colors etc which is used in trading that particular good so it will help people to identify the source of the good to help them distinguish their product from rest of the products available in the market now once a product is been registered it it can be 
you know, you can put an R encircled in front of your trademark, which is valid for a period of 10 years, and you can get it renewed in every 10 years. Till the registration, you may put a DM uh, in front of your trademark. Geographical indication is all about any place name which becomes famous from a particular uh, product which is famous all because of the originality, quality, reputation or any other characteristics of the product. So certain places become really famous for any of the product which are either made or grown at that location which might be grown at other locations as well, made at other locations as well but from that particular location it is famous. Um, as said, in res with respect to their originality, quality, reputation, or any other characteristics. So, uh, for example, Darjeeling tea, Nagpuri oranges, Kanjiram silk sari, Kolapuri chappal, Agrika petha, Pashmina silk, Chanderi silk, Banarsi silk. There are various examples, Bikaneri bujia, etc. <coughs> so, it is not like tea is not grown at any other part of the country, but Tea from Darjeeling is famous and it is having unique taste, flavor and aroma all because of the unique soil condition and environmental condition of Darjeeling. Uh, likewise, silk saris are made at various locations and uh, it is famous from Kanjiram, Banaras or Chandeli etc. is all because of the skilled artisans residing in that location which make that product really famous from that location. They are having fine details. They know how to give unique characteristics to that particular product or how to add uniqueness to it. They they are they are really skilled in, it, in that particular act. They have acquired knowledge generation over generation and that is the reason behind uniqueness of that product. So here it is not an individual right. Let me clarify that people residing in that zone and those who are involved in that particular making or growing of that particular uh, product famous from that location will form an organization and they will be allowed to register that particular product as a GI under their organization's name. This is valid for 10 years initially and you may renew it in every 10 years. Lastly, we are uh, the type of IP we are going to discuss is copyrights, which is all about the literary uh, work or artistic aesthetic creation cinematographic work, etc., like movies, music, painting, software, books, articles, journal, um, etc. Now here, um, you know, uh, unauthorized copying and reproduction could be stopped if copyright is availed for that particular work. Now, term of protection is life of the author plus 60 years post the life of the author. There is a relationship between different IPs which can be utilized for better protection. Let's understand this with the help of bottle of Coca-Cola. The formulation of Coke is really unique. That is all because the company has not opened it to the general public and kept it secret and that is their trade secret. Uh, the logo Coca-Cola is an example of trademark. Every time you'll find the same logo in all their, uh, all their bottles and all on their website as well. Shape of the bottle is also unique enough which they have registered under industrial design so that others cannot copy it and people can identify it easily when it is brought into the market only on the uh, also on the basis of industrial design of the bottle. Now patent they would have obtained for the bottling equipments they are having all the text, database, artistic work which is appearing on their website or on their uh, product is coming under the purview of copyrights. So one single product, but for better protection, they have got various IPs registered for various aspects of that particular product. For filing a patent application in India, <coughs> four categories are allowed, wherein any individual can or in group can filing can be done. The rest of the categories are not natural, and that is the reason this category is also called as natural person category. Next category is any legal entity wherein any established company, university, institute, R&D centers, etc. are allowed to file here. Any small entity which is registered as per MSME Act which gives its uh, recognition as to small, micro or medium enterprise is also allowed for filing under small entity. Any startup which is having rightful recognition from the concerned department can also go for filing of patent application. 
Now, where you should go for patent and design filing in India is all about the four locations wherein the applications are accepted, which are situated at Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, and Kolkata. As previously said, there is a territorial jurisdiction for each IP office for each uh, office for patents and design of uh, offices. When people residing from that zone have to file their application only in the office available in their zone. For first time filing of patent application in India, normally it is called as ordinary patent application. First time it is being filed anywhere in India um, uh, and not being filed anywhere in the world. The basic filing is done for the first time. It's called as ordinary patent application. Of course, your application needs to be complete in all sense. Your invention should be complete. All the features should be justified, etc. And you may go for filing of the same in the form of complete specification along with the claims. Uh, but in case your invention is yet to get completed, you require some more time to complete it. That is also possible. But in that case, you'll have to file it as provisional specification, which is a not a complete specification. So here you all understand that provisional specification will never be evaluated. So to complete it in all sense and file complete specification, patent office gives you a timeline of 12 months, which needs to be satisfied. Otherwise, the application would be treated as abandoned. <coughs> now, while writing patent specification, the way you write any other project report where you include a title, technical field, aims and objectives, you also discuss about the background art, what was known in the prior public knowledge, what was lacking, what led you to this invention, etc., is to be listed here. Then you start discussing about materials and methods, experimental procedures being followed, result and analysis. You also take help from drawings, abstract summary to explain that um, uh, project more. In the similar manner, you have to write your patent specification also. All these factors would be there. But along with that, you have to justify industrial applicability of this invention and closing statements in the form of uh, what uniqueness you have added to that particular concept, what you do not want public to copy is to be listed in uh, as set of claims. As such, we are having 30 forms in patent office, but I have listed five basic forms which are required for basic filing. First of all, of course, the application form is required, which is form number one where wherein you will fill the basic bi bibliographic data as to name of the applicant, inventor, uh, certain declarations, address of correspondence, title of the invention, etc. Um, your provisional or complete specification would be listed on form number two. For foreign filing, even if you haven't gone for it or if you have filed uh, the, your same application in foreign countries, the statement of foreign filing is to be submitted on form number three at regular interval to the patent office and in case inventors and in, uh, applicants are different then inventorship is to be declared on form number five and lastly a request for examination on form number 18 is required uh, form number 18 can be filed anytime between 48 months from the date of filing of form number one but the sooner you file form number 18 it will be sooner taken into consideration after publication of your application now, publication is a step which happens with respect to every patent application after 18 months of filing of form number one. Now, this 18 months is a, a long duration. And in case you want to save it, you may also request for early publication on form number nine. This is the optional uh, form. In case you wish to avail this facility, you may utilize the same. Uh, in case you're hiring a patent agent for filing your application, uh, form number 26 would be required wherein you will be providing a power of attorney to that particular patent agent. For basic online filing fees for form number 1 is 1600 rupees for natural persons, startups and MSMEs and for others it is 8000 rupees. For form number 2, ideally it is free of cost if it is filed within 30 pages and within those 30 pages, if you are able to include 10 claims, is allowed. But the moment you exceed this limit, it will be chargeable as per your category. This was regarding online filing fees. For hard copy filing, approximately additional 10% fees would be required. Uh, for form number 18, fees is 20,000 rupees for others category. And for the rest of the categories, that is 4,000 rupees. 
We have also started expedited examination, which can be availed through form number 18A, wherein the fees is 60,000 for others category and for rest it is 8,000 rupees. Only a certain category is allowed to utilize this form, wherein if the applicant is a startup or a government body, or if one of the applicants is female, or if the application is filed through PCT route of entry, assigning India as ISA is again allowed to utilize this form if they wish so. Uh, for early publication, <coughs> you can uh, find it anytime before the expiry of 18 months. Normally, the application gets published within a month. Now, for grant procedure, first of all, when you go for filing of your patent application, it will be digitalized, screened, and classified, and will be published after 18 months. And request for examination will be taken into consideration after publication, after which it will be allotted to examine a controller pair which will go for formal and technical evaluation of the application and they will be allowed to uh, uh, they will be generating the first examination report which is to be replied within six months by the applicant you may also expect second examination report or a hearing before the grant or refusal of that application patent office also gives fair chance to the general public to go for pre-grant opposition or post-grant opposition based on fair grounds for filing, either you can do it physically or electronically filing could be done. Now for physical filing, either you can go to the patent office directly, pay the fees in the form of cash, DD and e-payment could also be done to submit your filled-in application. Or else you can send your filled-in application along with the DD of fees applicable uh, to the uh, requisite patent office by availing Indian Postal Service wherein either Indian Post, Indian Registered Post, or Indian Speed Post could be utilized for filing. For e-filing, uh, you of course require the basic requirement like banking facility, internet connectivity, a proper system, etc. But you will also require a digital signature or a e hastakshar for filing. In case you are utilizing digital sign uh, signatures, then Patent Office allows two class two or class three digital signatures and you are supposed to go for registration at IP India's website, create a login ID and password, fill in all the details, save the draft, preview it, and the drafted form can be either digitally signed or signed through ES Thakship. For, pay, um, for payment, it will be directed to any of the payment gateway. You have to select the uh, mode of payment uh, and the way in which you want to go for online payment. Once it is done, e-receipt would be generated. For design application examination and registration procedure, it is more or less same to the patent uh, criteria. But here you have to remember that there are 32 classes laid down by the design office. Based on the nature and function of that article, you have to select one of the classes under which you want to file that design application. So you'll find the entire list of classes at IP India's website. Uh, you, have, you just have to choose the class under which your application needs to be filed. The category which is allowed to file design application remains same as the category for filing of patent application. For online filing fees for form number one, which is uh, 4,000 rupees for others category, and uh, for categories of natural persons, startups, and MSMEs, that is 1,000 rupees. <coughs> Form number one is really basic and self-explanatory, which will ask you details regarding applicant's name, uh, address of correspondence, then nationality, legal status, class under which the applica application is to be filed, name of the article. You are supposed to affix your signature and date at the end. Uh, this is regarding form number one. You have to upload the images of the article um, and in case you are going for offline filing, then two set of representation of those articles are to be mentioned. <coughs> now, form number twenty-one would be required in case you are going for uh, you are going uh, to take help from any of the agent. <coughs> As said, the form is really easy enough. It is self-explanatory, and you may submit your application uh, easily. Now, um, 
this is the sample in which you are supposed to file your design application. Since it is all about the images you're submitting to the design office, so you have to remember that you provide good quality images because in case you're not able to provide it in a... Ma'am, I'm in a meeting. I'll call you back later. So uh, the quality of the image needs to be really good enough. Now, uh, in case the features are not visible properly, the background is not clear, the the you know the image is not clear the feature the uh, particular um you know uh, uh, drawing is not clear then it will be very difficult for evaluation along with this you have to remember that only one single application uh, is allowed to have a single design if you find multiple designs in the same application this wouldn't be considered Set of articles are understood wherein we understand that we are having a um, uh, table and chair as a set, um, cup and saucer as a set, etc. So unidentical uh, identical items when combined together and a single design is provided to it is not allowed for uh, design registration. At the same time, variation in the set is not allowed. So in we all know that in case you're selling a pair of gloves, it is one unit is for uh, left hand, the other one is for right hand. So there should be a synchrony in that, in that design. In case you are providing one identity as black and other one as a white, or you are giving different design to individual identity, then it is very difficult uh, to you know uh, to create synchrony and identification for that particular unit. So this is not allowed. Again, you have to understand that. Uh, Normally, a pair of gloves will be for left and right individual hand. So you cannot provide both the units for left hand or both for right hand. At the same time, normally footwear is for left foot or right foot and right foot only. In case you bring the creativity there and you provide um, three uh, individual units for a footwear and in all of them, you have provided individual design, color combination, etc. Of course, this is not allowed and this cannot be commercialized as well. So set is understood as a set and you should not bring variation in the set as well. Along with this, depiction of any living or dead person as a design registration is not allowed. Moreover, moreover in case any of the trademarkable or copyrightable stuff is there, that cannot be registered under design. Along with this, any of the books, uh, books, jacket, calendar, certificate, uh, postcard, stamp, medals, cartoons, greeting cards, maps, etc. are not allowed for design registration. Uh, for design registration, the definition of article and design needs to be satisfied. Along with this, you have to understand that your design should be really original. It shouldn't be uh, copied from somebody's work. It should be novel in nature. It shouldn't be obscene or scandalous at the same time. And most importantly, morality and security of India is considered before giving a grant for a particular design. So this is all about the basics of IPs, um, <coughs> their characteristics, etc., and how to go about its protection. So in case you're having any doubts, concerns, you may please ask mm -hmm. your uh, doubts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, madam, for very informative uh, session on uh, that is the features and importance of design, the importance of geo indication in trademark, and the process about filing of patent application. And so many topics will be discussed here, and we'll get a uh, very uh, uh, sharing uh, by sharing this knowledge. It is now, I invite Professor Rima Portduke, Madam, moderator of the session, to ask question on behalf of participant, if any. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Kavita, Ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to question answer session. Uh, but before uh, we begin the question answer session, uh, let me congratulate uh, Mrs. Pooja Maulikar for a great presentation. Uh, Ma'am, we appreciate your depth of knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us and our students. 
Can we start with the first question, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Uh, first uh, question uh, one of the participants asked is, if my invention, invention is stolen and filed without my consent, can inventorship be claimed? Uh, Ma'am, can you repeat the question again? If my invention is stolen uh -huh. and filed without my consent, mm -hmm. can inventorship be claimed? Uh, you can um, um, uh, file an opposition stating that this is your invention and this is wrongfully being filed. So this will be taken into consideration, of course. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Ma'am. Uh, second is... Uh, um, does inventors get all the rights for the pa patent granted? Inventors never get any right for the patent granted. In case they are not in the list of applicants, they wouldn't be able to enjoy the benefit of the grant. So you have to be really sure that whether you have sold the rights to the applicant or you, in case you want to have the rights, you should be in the list of applicants as well. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, last question is, can patents be filed in other countries without filing in India? Yes, of course. In case you feel that the, it is not patentable in our country because of certain uh, non-patentable invention, okay. it comes under non-patentable inventions. The only thing is that you have to intimate to our uh, Indian patent office that because of so-and-so reason, I'm not interested in filing it here and giving the permission to file it outside. So you can very well file it outside, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, that's all from my end. Over to Dr. Kavita Ingani. Uh, thank you, madam. Now I invite Dr. Farooq Sheikh for the vote of thanks. <coughs> thank you so much, ma'am. And I once again, I congratulate Pooja Amolika, madam, uh, for uh, a very good uh, uh, interactive uh, session on intellectual property rights. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Farooq Ahmed. It gives me uh, immense pleasure to pre propose vote of thanks on behalf of Saudi Nakishur Mamedwar Institute of Management Studies and Research, Kosara, Chandrapur. Uh, we are highly grateful to Honorable Mrs. Pooja Maudikar, ma'am, for her informative session on intellectual property rights. We are uh, all very much thankful to Dr. G. N. Chakravarti, sir, principal of Solina Kishor Mamedwar Institute of Management Studies and Research, Kosara Chandrapur, for organizing such an informative webinar on intellectual property rights. Uh, we are th very much thankful to Professor Rima Porduke, moderator of this program. Thank you, madam. We are very much thankful to all the members of organizing committee of this webinar and all the participants to make this webinar a grand success. Last but not least, we are very much thankful to those who are contributed directly or indirectly to make this webinar a grand success. Once again, thank you very much all and thanks for participating uh, patient hearing. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Okay. With the kind permission, we conclude this session. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm really grateful to the organization of this particular uh, uh, workshop where you've taken keen interest and efforts were taken for smooth conduction of this workshop. I'm really grateful to the organization and to all the people who have attended here uh, for their patient listening and for the cooperation. It is highly appreciated. I wish you all a very happy IT experience in future for any of the association, any help you require from I. Uh, from our end for any of the collaborations, you may very well feel free to, uh, you know, uh, get associated with RG and IPM for the same. We'll be really uh, privileged and blessed to get associated with, with you. Uh, um, regarding the participant list, I would like to request to the uh, coordinator, Kavita ma'am, to please provide me the entire list of participants in the prescribed tabular format so that uh, rest of the procedures can be carried forward. Thank you so much to all. Sure, uh, madam. Uh, yeah, Kavita, just a moment. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Ma'am, as you know that uh, uh, earlier I told that every faculties of my institute need to uh, file for copyright and patent. So initially we shall begin with the copyright actually. So everyone is PhD in our institute. 
so i would like to have your consideration whether their thesis can be copyright from your uh, you know center i mean that is possible uh, you will have to contact to copyright office for the same sir we are just the training center here the filing of any of the ips is not been done rather you will have to go to that particular office in which ips is to be filed so regarding this copyright you can very well file for copyrights at uh, delhi copyright office or you can go for filing through online as well copyright.gov.in is the website where you will find more information form number 14 is required and um, uh, per work 500 is the fees so just you have to file online that will also be added. okay so let us have the outcome of this particular workshop is that uh, from today i mean we try to uh, file the copyright today uh, i mean all the thesis of the faculties that is one of the outcome of this uh, workshop i'm glad yeah okay thank uh, you thank you for the association you. and we are looking forward for a long term association with rajiv gandhi intellectual property right management institute yes of course thank you sir thank you sir. and thank you madam thank you ma'am okay thank you so much so with this i think i should be signing thank you all a very happy ip experience in future thank you so much for inviting thank you participant and after webinar all the participant fill the feedback form by the link given on the telegram in Yeah, yeah.